I want to shift the conversation just a little bit to maybe someone who is the real enemy in all of this, and it's maybe these legislator legislatures that are putting these giant tax rates out there in the first place, right, and get a discussion kind of going about that. Eric, a guy you and I know um, from way back, actually kind of added his thoughts on this. Taylor KB is a guy that is well-respected in the gaming industry, a guy that has started and sold multiple different companies, currently invested in another company within the space as it goes and basically his little his take on this is i don't expect betters to care about tax rates but they probably should was kind of like his whole thought in all of this which is here's the deal we're already seeing we are already seeing some of these smaller books fold as it is anyway in the current climate in the current landscape because they can't make any money right and so now as as betters we have always said and and even us on this side whether you're a big bet or not competition is good the more options you have is good the 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 innovation that these people will have to continue to do whenever there are other people innovating is good for the customer there's all kinds of things that come along with this that are good for the customer well his kind of point is saying that eventually there has there will be a breaking point one way or another so it's either you charge a tax like DraftKings trying to do or you or you have to slip it into the VIG being higher or do whatever or something like that because again if we get to a point where every state is at these ridiculously high tax rates the only way for these businesses to survive is to do something like this now he's not his point is not saying to add a surcharge but he's saying at some point the rubber will meet the road as to how do you add more money to the bottom line right and so basically just saying that i'm not saying people should support it but i am saying that if you do care about price as a better you should also care about tax rates is basically kind of what 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 he was saying in in his you know long point i i would really recommend people going over and kind of reading his blurb his thoughts over there it's just twitter.com slash taylor kb but kind of our thoughts here just on the states and their role in all of this as well like is it okay to say like you know what we'll charge this because you're going to pay it. So it is what it is. Like, we don't care. It's going to end up costing our citizens and our customers and whatever and all that stuff like that. Like, we don't care because you're going to pay it regardless. I mean, my very short answer would be yes, that's the way it is. And that maybe is the way, maybe I'm I'm probably okay with that at at first Mm -hmm. blush. There's a little, you know, this is one area in which these operators did shoot themselves in the foot a little bit over the course of Mm -hmm. the past five years by, you know, uh, boasting to investors about how much, how big the potential was for this market and how much money was flowing through their companies. And then at the same time, the same that afternoon, going to a state legislature and talking about how they are unable to make money in this business. And it that's difficult for a lawmaker to hear. It's also worth considering the fact that a lawmaker's duty to the state is to maximize state revenue. That is their entire job is to capitalize on these businesses to the extent they're able to. So, you know, I, in short, I don't fault the lawmakers for this, for the way they've handled this for the rates in New York or Pennsylvania or Illinois or or anywhere else. That being said, the whole structure taxing GGR is, is a difficult decision in this industry that really turns the screws on operators. It lowers the value to the customer. It certainly is not ideal for the industry itself, but it is it is the way to maximize revenue to the state. And in, in that sense, they're they're doing their their duty to the to their constituents, you know, if uh, Matt, if they wanted if the operators, if the businesses wanted to make that case, if they wanted to make that point, the time to do it was when Governor Andrew Cuomo said it's going to take at least 50 percent tax rate for you to play in new york they didn't implement that tax on any of the operators every one of the operators who is in new york agreed to that tax they proposed Mm -hmm. the tax rate of over 50 percent that was the time to say hey you know what there's no way for us to make money if this is the way that you want to tax this thing because legislators naturally are going to go back now right leave Pennsylvania out of the deal because we used to look at Pennsylvania as oh my god 36 percent effective tax rate and it's still pretty high obviously but then New York went and trumped it and now we've seen other states try to come in as high or higher like with the Illinois tiered tax structure the industry when this was a new thing and when they were racing through state legislatures getting this passed you found a lot of state legislators who really didn't understand this all that well 
and they were being fed information by lobbyists, by industry advocates saying, hey, here's the tax rate in Nevada. Here's the tax rate in New Jersey, where it's 13 and a quarter on online sports betting. And they went along with it, right? Like, we want to get this. We want to capture this tax money. We don't want to lose this tax money. Well, legislators got smarter, right? Executives got smarter. And they said, well, hold on a second. Just like Eric mentioned, if you're going to tell us about profit, and we're the ones who are trying to legalize this activity for the purpose of attempting to make more money for our state, why aren't we taxing this at a higher rate? We saw Ohio go back and double its 10 to 20, and now we see Illinois go back and take its 15 and move it up much higher for the most profitable operators. So I'm not unsympathetic to the businesses coming in and saying, hey, this is a lot and we need to find a way to deal with it. But I don't know that I would necessarily look at the legislators as being the enemies in this case because there were ways to push back on this before we got to the point we are now, before we got to the point where you agreed to the rate in New York Then they tried to go back immediately, less than a year later. They tried to go back and get that rate changed in New York. And Senator Joe Adabo, among others, said, why would we do that? You pitched it. You agreed to it. We're making good money off it. We shouldn't do that. So there's going to be a middle ground. You're right. Eventually, we're going to land somewhere in the middle. I don't know that it's going to be short or easy from the industry side to get there, though. I look at this, I guess, from more selfishly from a better standpoint or whatever, because I just know how this ends up, right? It eventually is going, everything ends up getting trickled down to the customer, right? And so, like, it ends up, there will be, whether it is DraftKings surcharge at X percent or FanDuel coming in, and which, by the way, uh, we can speak to that, like, what they may or may not do, their earnings call actually tomorrow on that, but, like, you know, adding a nickel to, to whatever, whatever, or something like that, like some sort of extra something. I just know how this all ends, right? Because there's not going to be this whole, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever, we'll just we'll just accept the extra costs and like, you know, it's fine. We're just not going to be near as profitable as we thought we're going to be. And this is just going to be, we're, you know, it's not a charitable, it's not a charitable deal that they're, that they're doing here, right? It's still trying to, to make cash. And so for me, it's going to be worse for me. And so that's why I kind of look at these, I do look at the states and say, I have no problem charging a high tax rate. I have a problem charging what I would consider to be an egregious tax rate on some of this stuff, right? And because that really does affect the market writ large and the customer overall as well. And it will be passed out. We will see books fold. We will see books not even get involved in certain states. We will see all these different things. That's okay, though. Like, those things are okay. That's part of this industry. Not every... Not every mediocre sports book needs to succeed in this industry just as a counterpoint to that. I don't disagree with that with anything you're saying, but I don't think the measure of success is necessarily how many operators are able to participate in this industry, you know? Well, it, it, I guess, but again, like it just for a customer, options are better, right? I mean, like op- if if I only had a choice between Ford and Chevy and whatever, sooner or later, Ford and Chevy and Toyota are going to get together and they're going to understand like, Hey man, it's just the three of us. So like, Hey, kind of like, you know, under the table, this is how we should start doing business like that. And like to think that that is out of the realm of possibility, I think is being a little naive in this situation. I think that would would certainly be the case if we get to a point where there's only four or five books and that's all there's ever going to be, then there's going to be, it's, it's going to, it's going to change the industry. It's going to change the landscape of everything. I think naive is a big word to throw around here. Like, you know, you're, you're being a little naive if you think that having competitors is what's going to necessarily keep prices down. Like, there have been competitors all the way along here, and none of the competitors have given a compelling product enough to either force the big boys to change what they do or to somehow create a product that competes with the ones at the top. I get it. The idea of worrying about collusion and price fixing is only realistic. We see it with the airlines, right? Less airlines means higher prices on on the airlines. But the fact of the matter is we haven't had competitors who have forced anything to change in that way. So I see where it's one possible outcome. We're down the line. It's worse for the better. But we're still in a situation where we have a fair amount of competitors. There's, there's still a lot of the tier three type operators who are out there who are ostensibly competing with DraftKings and FanDuel, but they haven't forced them to change anything. 
right? Uh, in fact, they're, they're making them take these anti-competitive kind of steps at the same time that they're still operating without the market contracting. So I, I don't know that we would say that this is definitely how it ends. It's possible, absolutely, but I don't know that that's how it ends. That's yeah, why I, I think not, this... Yeah, go I, ahead. I, I think this this exact topic is so interesting, this surcharge, because this is what you're talking about. This is DraftKings finally saying, finally telling the customer, okay, we have to give you worse value. Like they, they're, they're admitting to the customer, we're going to start to take more money from you. Sorry. And that's the, this, this is coming to fruition. Your, your fear here and the response is really going to tell us whether or not we need to be worried about it. What, what the other operators do, whether customers start to, find their migrate away from DraftKings. you know so far to to this point we haven't seen customers chased away by by anything on any app all the prices are pretty much the same you can find what you wanted a large number of apps there's not been any reason to really to move your business somewhere else so here we are at this crossroads with DraftKings, where they finally put customers to a decision here like you're gonna stick with us or or, or are you gonna go it's it's this is coming to fruition what you're talking about your points are well taken here i'm just not sure we're gonna see it change much going forward yeah and and to be to be clear i'm talking this is not like a this is not like a in a in a snapshot of the near future type deal right obviously i'm talking for like further down the line i mean this this is yes there are yes there are tier three competitors currently it's it's i don't think it's crazy to think that we can pretty easily assess that a decent amount of those are going to go away over the next five years. We've already seen it in the early stages of this. And if it gets tougher to compete from a financial standpoint, then obviously we're going to see more of those fold and we're going to see more of those go away as well. And so I'm, I'm more looking at the long-term picture of an industry and what does a healthy industry look like? And a healthy industry to me doesn't look like three or four different choices. Right. And like at the end of the day, I kind of see us barreling towards that fairly fairly like quicker than I thought. Right. I mean, maybe that was the end game anyway, 10 years from now, 20 years. Like, maybe that was the end game as it was anyway, but it seems like this might speed up the process. If we don't give any of these tier three, a shot from the get go. Right. Because if they can't afford to even do anything at all, if they had, you know, aspirations, going, we, we, we thought even there's guys waiting in the wings. We keep talking about bet 365 and keep talking about whatever. Well, maybe we get to a point where, where they were waiting in the wings anyway, Right. And then now they're like, see, this is why we waited in the wings, because now they're going to do this nonsense with all this. And we're, just, we're not even going to give it a whirl to hell with it. We're out of here. You know, and so, again, don't know that's going to happen. This is all just kind of speculating forward thinking type of stuff. But that's where I'm coming from in this. Sure. And that makes perfect sense. And I think what, what would happen is that that is when we start to get into the check and balance of the regulated market. That is not just the free market competition part. That becomes the regulator part, right? That becomes the part of saying you subjected yourself to regulation that is supposedly in the best interest of the consumer. And we talk all the time about consumer protections when it comes to a sports book not running off with your money, or like we just saw in New Jersey where Bet365 was ordered to pay more than half a million dollars for odds that were improperly adjusted on bettors over the course of three years. I think you also can see regulators and or legislators step in if you see the market getting to a point of collusion, to a point of price fixing that is not good for the customer, right? That there's another check and balance that can be in there even if the market does come to that point. This DraftKings, FanDuel, BetMGM, Caesars, Fanatics, 365, whoever it is, we're not talking about too big to fail here, right? This is not the automakers or, or the airlines, right? It's sports books. And so... I think you'll still have that potential check on the system down the line. Like you're talking about five, six, seven years down the line. If it gets to the point where we see companies trying to step too far, then it becomes more of a political issue for legislators and regulators to jump in on. It's like with healthcare, the way I'm looking at this right now, where it's like we wait for something to break before we come in and try to fix it as opposed to being preventative and not letting it break in the first place. And so... That's why I'm kind of where I am with all this, where I'm like, we, we're we not, I think if we were all, all given truth serum right now and thought about where is this like is, is going to lead us down the line, right? If, 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 if every state comes in and wants to charge 40 to 50% tax rate and all this stuff like that, like giving us all truth serum, we know where this leads, like, you know, again, six, seven years down the line. So it's like, do we wait for it to break and then come in and try to fix it? Or can we try to fix it 
or can we try to prevent it from breaking in the first place? It's kind of where my passion in all of this is with a lot of this stuff. Cause it's always like, well, let's just wait until it breaks and then we'll come in and try to put the pieces back together as opposed to just going, Hey, here's an idea. The pieces don't have to shatter in the first place. Why don't we try to do something like yeah. that? Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I see that. And just to, to put a bow on it for the most part, look at who's doing this, right? It's the big States that can say, you can't live without us. Right. Mm -hmm. Illinois, Pennsylvania, New York are states that can all look at the operators and say, if you want to be able to profit, you need us. And we're going to charge you a price that is commensurate with you needing us. And when it came to New York, they basically forced the operators to play chicken and look around at each other and say, all right, well, I'll vote for you if you vote for me and say, like, we're all not going to compete in this market. And all it was going to take was one of them to say, uh, you know what? We will. We'll go in and blow up the whole thing and lock uh, certain sports books out of the market. So, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. Of course, I'm I'm very interested from from Eric's perspective when when you went in and ran the numbers on this, Eric, and came up with, you know, up to two hundred twenty million dollars. And of course, the question of whether or not this surcharge would be taxed. Were you surprised at all by the way this played out? Yeah, huge. This is one of those little nerdy details that most people are just going to have their eyes gloss over and tune out mm -hmm. for the next three minutes. But the tax treatment on these surcharges is super interesting and really pivotal to the the way it affects DraftKings bottom line. We arrived at an estimate of 220 million across these three states. That goes down by about 100 million if those surcharges are taxed. You're talking about tax rates that are 40 to 50 percent. So you can just remove 40 to 50 percent of those fees. Um, this is money that is that may not necessarily go to DraftKings, depending on the way policymakers handle this. It could end up winding up in the tax coffers of these states. So um, I don't know that anyone knows how that's going to work just yet. I can say that it's very clear that DraftKings is doing everything they can to separate these fees from the actual business of sports betting that they're in, the you know the the framing as a, a surcharge, the way they positioned it to regulators. There, there's a on the slide, they talk about this being a separate transaction from the, the sports bet itself. So they're, they're hoping this will get tacked onto their bottom line at the end. I think there's a real chance that this goes through the taxation process as well. And they come out with, you know, 40 to 50% of these fees that they collect instead.